Welcome back to year number three, week number divisional round of the playoffs. And who is you featuring? I'm OKC Bison. Things have been pretty wild in the playoffs so far. We saw uh, the Voyagers obviously get the buy or sort of the, you know, victory because the Aviators are one of the teams that cheated. Uh, we see a 76 to 56 matchup in the first round with the Bulls and the Orbis, which is probably one of the craziest scores I've ever seen. This is not NBA 2K. This is Madden. There was 1,700 yards of offense in that game. No defense whatsoever, but still the Bulls come out with a 20 point victory. Uh, and then you see the Lumberjacks versus the Dreadnoughts. Doctor ends up getting Sam Howell injured, comes back, wins that game with a field goal in dramatic fashion, beats the Lumberjacks. The Lumberjacks are a team to watch out for next year. They build a really good roster. He's GM the right way and he's making moves. Now in the divisional round, the Sentinels end up losing to the Bulls here. A big, big game. It's an upset. The sixth beating the one seed. Uh, then you have the Voyagers dropping 50 points against Doc and the Dreadnoughts, but they end up putting 53. So they get the W. Again, crazy stuff. He wins by a field goal in both matchups. Again, coming from behind in this one. And then again, breaking this high on that one, it looks like. And then in the NFC, the Dragons lose to the Yelks, which by a 10-point margin. Uh, the Golden Eagles lose to the Shamrocks by six points, and then the Wizards win 51 to 10 against the Blues. That is a crazy four or five matchup there that I did not expect going like a blowout. Though maybe the Wizards have a chance to win, but not quite by 41 points. We move on to the next round. The Wizards have already beaten the Shamrocks. They will be moving on to the NFC Championship game, and it is now up to myself versus the Elks to figure out who ends up meeting the Wizards in the NFC title game. Now the roster for the Elks is a tough one. Devon A. Chan is disgusting. 99 overall is 23 years of age. He throw he runs him like four to five hundred times a year. He passes to him probably another 70 ish times, maybe 100 times. So this is a highly used dude that we have to watch out for, whether it's wheel routes or stretch routes or whatever. He's going to use that speed as much as he can. He has Trevon Diggs out there as one of his corners. Tyron Matthew in the secondary. He's got Aquano as his left tackle that's already 24, only 24 years of age. Ira Murphy, Cameron Hayward, John Franklin, Deron Payne. There's a lot of really talented players here. At QB, as a reminder, he is Scotty White. One of his biggest issues in the previous years is that he didn't really have a good quarterback. Now he is Scotty White. 22, 87 overall, superstar dev trade. This is definitely a guy that can get the job done. Behind Devon A. Chan, he's got Ezekiel Elliott, who you'll use a little bit here and there. And then a wide receiver, he's going to Miller Moody of Cascade Valley fame, Tyler Boyd, Darius Slayton, Tyler Scott, Kyle Phillips, and Tutu Atwell. Again, the big theme here is speed outside of Boyd and really Phillips. Everybody else is fast. The number one guy he throws to, though, is Darnell Washington, all six foot seven of him, 24 years of age, 84 overall. He is disgusting to try to guard and figure out how to really stop him. That's really one of the biggest things we have to do today is stop Darnell Washington, stop Devon A. Chan. And if we can do those things, we give ourselves a chance. At corner behind Trevon Diggs and Byron Murphy, he has Julius Brent, who again, an absolute stud, six foot three. He's got 88 speed, but 99 acceleration. So he makes it for a lot of things there. Uh, we go to Xavier Howard. We have Vincent Gray at free safety, Tyron Matthew, who we talked about, and his strong safety, Jalen Petre behind him, Ashton Davis. A lot of really talented players in the secondary. He might be the seventh seed, but he just knocked off the two seed. We've played him. We beat him both times earlier this year, but he's one of the toughest opponents we have every single season. So we have to be on a Ray game. Now we head into our first press conference of this postseason. And they say, coach, it's not often you have to play someone for a third time, but you're facing a familiar foe this week in the Elks. What are you expecting uh, in this game? Hard hitting brawl or chess match? Uh, I think we're going to go hard hitting brawl. You know, to me, robber games always have a lot more intensities. Winner go home. Both sides will be even more amped up than usual. That seems about right to me. So defensive players on both teams will have plus five hit power. Expect fumbles. So our goal here, beat the Elks, advance to the next round. And that's really all that matters right now. And we got a couple of upgrades this week. Some very important players on our team. They're going to be getting that upgrade. Uh, the big one here is Steven Lowe. Run stopper. I would love for him to be a run stopper because we need to make sure that HN does not go crazy for us or against us this week. Plus one to awareness, block shedding man coverage, which is big for him. Pursuit end zone coverage, also important for him. And then plus two to play rec. If you know anything about this guy, his uh, coverage ability, he's not really all that great. He's 56 man coverage uh, for that. He has 80 zone coverage, which we love, but the man coverage is Lay Doodoo. Along with him, we have Jarvis Horn getting an upgrade here. Uh, we can do a lot of different things for him, but I think deep threat is kind of the way to go. He has been an absolute stud in his second season. Plus one to awareness, catching traffic, catching, jumping, spectacular catch, and plus three to release. That is going to be big. His release is up to a 77. Again, we're working on getting his release to be better. But with that kind of speed, the better his release gets, the more dangerous he's going to be. Now, we had two important cogs, one on defense, one on offense. We also have some offensive linemen, two of each that we have to basically go for here. Uh, Mark Lucas of left guard. We're going to increase his pass blocking, which makes that a 70 overall now. He gets plus one to awareness and pass block and plus two 
pass block power. And then the last guy is gonna be Nate Schaefer. Doesn't really play, probably guy that's maybe more so for the future, but we're gonna upgrade his pass protect as well because I feel like that's really a big issue with our offensive line. Plus one awareness and pass block finesse for both of those guys. We feel good, but again, Schaefer not really gonna be playing today. Then we also look at the players of the week from the previous round. Tyler Huntley goes 257, 247 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, a rush for 10 yards. He got him a touchdown as well. Sauce Gardner balled out, two tackles, two picks, and a tutty. Over on the AFC side, Bijan goes for 236 yards, four rushing touchdowns, and 36 receiving yards of four grabs. And then Hufanga goes six tackles, two interceptions, and a touchdown. I mean, both of those dudes had guys ball out on both sides of the ball, and that's the reason why they're in the NFC and AFC championship games. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big, big, big thing just happened. Pause if needed. We were doing a mini game, you know, just doing this before we do every game. And Jarvis Horn, our wide receiver that has been a legend for us, got a dev trade upgrade from one of the drills. More on that in a moment. Now, before we jump into the game, we actually have a couple of other guys to upgrade here from doing some of the drills. Gordon Toon is going to be a big time player for us. We finally get him back this week. He's been out for a couple of weeks with a, an issue. I don't remember what it was, maybe a shoulder issue. Uh, we're going to be bringing him back in as a power rusher. Maybe a run snapper would have been a little bit better. But power rusher, plus three awareness, plus some power moves. That doesn't really help us out a ton. But having him back in the lineup will be major. Ja'Cory Bennett is going to be a big time starter for us next year. Probably trading at least one of our starters um, at corner. He's got 85 man, 88 zone. We're going to go ahead and bump up his, wait, what was his zone? 85 man is what he actually had. So we're going to upgrade his man to man. Maybe he could have done his slot uh, ability instead. But that's going to give us plus one awareness and tackle, plus two man coverage. So now 87 man, 88 zone coverage with 97 speed. His press is terrible, but we'll eventually get that up too. And then Jermichael White has been kind of an unsung hero for us playing outside linebacker. He's pretty good. He's just not super fast. Uh, we're going to focus, I think, here with him. Speeds 82, 95 acceleration, finesse moves, block shedding. Uh, I think we kind of want to... His play rec is actually pretty terrible here. I think we might go a little pass coverage with him. Uh, he definitely needs to increase in that area as well. Probably a lost cause there, but plus two man in zone. Uh, he's going to be up a little bit now, so better, but 49 zone coverage is probably part of the reason why he's not seeing the field. It's on 41, man. Yeah, he's probably going to be a defensive end at some point in his career. All right, here we go. Playoff time to see what our squad ultimately has here. We got Wilbur back this week, which is going to be big, and he gets an injury on the first play to one of his major defensive linemen. All right, big third and four. This is kind of a risky play here. If he blitzes, he did not. Oh my God, Wilbur made a catch that never happens. Let's go. Broken thumb. Wow, Frank Myers is out for the rest of the game. Oh yeah, make him stop the run. Make him stop the run. He was, I was going to run a read option there. He a thousand percent had that covered, so. Don't fumble, Lamar. Okay, that's fine. All right, good pressure by him. All right, got to same field goal range here. No, I should have clicked on. That's on me. All right, big potential play here. No, we got pressure. And we get a guy down. Well, I guess Nate Safer is going to play right now. I think we're in field goal range, though. All right, fourth to 16. We kind of sold a little bit there. He's going to block. <gasps> Bro, he timed that so well. He almost got it. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh, my God. Please, thank you. Yep, that's exactly what he wants to do is get Zeke out there play action no that's my that's no that's not my responsibility why is it how did boogie get hurt good stop good stop start out washington post route that's so cheeks sorry i'm gonna try to focus a little bit in right now swam the wrong way this game is so stupid this game is so How does it make sense that a guy can run up, cut right, run laterally full speed, and my pursuit angles are so bad that he can then turn? Like, it's just this game is so terrible. Good catch, McBride. There we go. Big play, Wilbur. Big play. There we go. Fall forward. The catch tray. Jarvis! Let's go! Superstar dev trade Jarvis Horn. Let's go. Ah! Playing the pass here. 
could be a stretch. Definitely a pass. No! Boogie Bastard, why are you that deep in coverage? I respect it, but man, that's a pick by Dean. I'm there. You, boy, if he caught that, I would have lost my mind. I love how my linebacker didn't do anything. I knew he was putting him on a wheel route, though. Oh, he missed. Let's go. Huge stand by the defense. Come on now. Break through that, Devonta. You're a grown man. Doing grown man things. No, I should have cut. That's on me. Good defense. Big conversion. Get rid of me. Oh, Lamar, please. He's not. No way! I threw a pick. That's on me. That was such a risky throw. That was such a risky, unneeded throw. My God. I thought we had the pick. Well, those are just way too close, in my opinion. With multiple guys there, those are way too close. What is Rogers doing? Here's where I'm looking at it, though. I have played abysmal, and I'm down four. So we have that going for us. If we can get to play normal, I can win this game. All right, we're just going to take the field goal. Uh, I wanted to throw it. I didn't want to risk it. It's kind of a log jam. Whew. All right, we're good. Our kicker has not missed a field goal at all this season. I just want to point that out. Here we go. Here for it. All right, we got a nice drive here. Dude, he clicks off to make tackles. I don't have respect for that. All right, so it's been a good drive. Let's make it a great one, though. Uh, Wilbur would have got that first. Yup. I'm targeting his man. I'm targeting his man. He doesn't want to cover that. Devontae Wilbur don't care. Let's go. All right, we got the lead back. We got the lead back. Let's hold on to it this time. Risky. All right, that's fine. We're going to take the field goal here. It makes it an eight point game, which was a lot of pressure on him. And we still get the ball back, even if he gets both. So I like that. All right, he's playing for the fake, but we're going to go ahead and kick this one. We are taking the points again. I guess it's an eight point lead. We just got to play really good defense here. Michael White pick that off. Jeremy Harris, somebody. There we go. I'm late hitting all of these guys. Stinking and Duncan. He's going to try something, though. Stephen Law, way to get after it. Jeremy Harris is there. Why do they have him playing that way? That makes no sense. I know it's mesh spot. I could have told you that. Yeah, that let him a wide open angle to go out of bounds. That's on me. It's the wrong coverage. Oh, Daffy. God, that's twice it's been in your neighborhood. On the same exact play, flood drive. He wants this out route. We're covering both routes. Oh, okay, as long as he drops it. As long as he drops it. He's going to go... Bro, I've done this three times now this game. Keep him in bounds, it's fine. Let's re-doctor in the play up. Mmm, I wanted him to try to test that. Nah, we got guys there. In what world? Madden. Nope. And then we give that up. Unbelievable. All right, man. The bailouts have been crazy, chap. <laughs> Game over. You're not getting that much time on that. Game over. Hey, look, this was a matchup right here. I've had to play Yak three times because he's in my division, and this was one of the craziest ones we've had so far. Lamar obviously clutched this one up for me. The fact that I accidentally hurdled at the end and almost fumbled has me scared beyond belief. But you know what? Unbelievable game. We'll be seeing you.
Recapping the stats, Scotty White had a 211 game, one touchdown, no interceptions. He only averaged about 6.3 yards, so he was like pretty much throwing underneath a lot. I was watching Darnell Washington's routes the entire game. I gave up some passes to the running back, unfortunately, but still, I will take it. Lamar, we one interception, which is really a dumb play by me, but other than that, he played well. On the ground, it was great to have Wilbur back. A lot of tough yards for him, 18 for 73, one tutty, 25 yards after contact. Big fan of that. A-Chan had... In my opinion, two really just not great runs that went for a touchdown. I don't know how both of them happened, but it is what it is. For the most part, we kept him in check. Lamar was big, though. Seven for 64, getting out there, making some conversions, especially that long 29-yarder at the end really sealed the deal. On the receiving side, HN again, touched the ball more than anybody today. Eight for 82, didn't get in the end zone on the receiving side. Trey McBride, though, a big drop. A little salty about that, but still... 5 for 59 is him. I mean, we really spread the ball around. Darnell Washington getting injured definitely hurt him a lot. He came back in the game. However, Wilbur had some clutch catches. Um, and who got our touchdown? Oh, yeah, Jarvis Thorne. Nice little touchdown earlier in the game. Defensively, the guy that should have won the defensive rookie of the year. Stephen Lowe, eight tackles. One of those being for loss. Had a nice pass deflection out there as well. He's really the reason that they didn't get the two-point conversion at the end of the game. He blew up the play, hit Scotty Weiss. He tried to throw, which maybe could have been a two-point conversion that would have been successful. But Stephen Lowe wasn't having it. You'd love to see it. Uh, from a sack perspective, we didn't hit the quarterback one single time today, which is wild interceptions. We didn't get a single one today, but I'm still happy with how the defense played. We had some bad plays for the most part. I, I just, I will still say he threw six passes that should have been intercepted today, especially on that last drive. There were like at least two that I'm like, man, these should be coming back with us and we should be walking out here with a W pretty easy, but still we went to the wire. We persevered and that's all that matters, baby. NFC Championship soon. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. Oh,